Hey, so over the last couple of weeks, I've been using the HTC Vive Flow, and this is what it looks like. This is basically the pair of glasses or headphones or headset, whatever you wanna call it, and this thing is pretty cool. I mean, I've used it for well over two weeks now, and I've had so many different experiences playing lots of different games, and I thought I'd make this video going over my overall experience, and whether or not these kind of headsets in 2022 are worth it or whether you should hold off. Now, right off the bat, these are pretty portable. So you can literally carry them anywhere with you. Uh, you can put them in your backpack or anything like that. They won't fit in your pocket, but with the headset, you'll also need a power bank as well as a smartphone to power the overall experience. Now, you might've seen this little wobbly bit right here. This is where the power from the power bank goes into the headphones. And then you've got a companion smartphone, which can be used to control everything you see, the UI, etc., etc. Now, for the time being, iOS devices are not supported on the HTC Vive Flow, and there's a full list of all the devices that are supported on their website. So if you wanna learn more about which device is supported, make sure to visit that before purchasing the headset. And something to keep in mind also is that if you run any sort of Exynos chipset uh, Samsung smartphone, uh, you'll be able to run things fine on the Vive headset. And of course, if you've got an HTC phone, that should work as well. Again, the full list will be in the link down in the description if you wanna learn more. Now, the power bank is also something that's really, really important. You need to get one that's shown on screen, basically with an output that you can connect via Type-C onto your headphones. And the battery life of the headphones is going to be how long the power bank lasts. For me, I could go anywhere between 100% to around 50% in, let's say about one and a half to two hours of usage, which is, pretty strong, I'd say it's not groundbreaking, but at the same time, you don't wanna be using these headphones for a long period of time because they do start weighing on your face as you use them for maybe an hour or so. Up to half an hour is great, but more than that, it sort of gets a bit heavy towards your nose area, and that's just something to keep in mind. Now, with these headphones, you obviously get something to uh, sort of rest the headphones on your nose, which is also provided by HTC, and you also get this little dial in the inside of the headphones, which you can use to sort of adjust the focus of what you're seeing on screen. So that's pretty much everything about the headphones. There's also a little sensor right here, which showcases or sort of senses um, if you are viewing the headset and then turns it on. And there's also some buttons on the top. These buttons are used for the volume, and these are just control buttons that you can use to control the UI. And last but not least, you've got some speakers right here, which can be used for your uh, VR experiences. These speakers do sound a bit louder than usual, so uh, anyone who's around you while you're using the headphones will be able to hear what you're hearing. So it's not completely sort of inside your ear, but it does a phenomenal job. It reminds me of the Bose uh, frames that you use to listen to music. I've never used them, but it sort of reminds me of that concept, and that's what HTC is going for. But that is pretty much all the hardware elements about the Vive um, Flow headphone. Now let me go over to the actual experience. So first of all, it didn't take me that long to configure my focus. Uh, even when I had glasses on, I could use them just fine. And overall, the fit and comfort is pretty nice as you probably see uh, from how I look like on a screen. Now, as far as the UI is concerned, again, connecting to a smartphone is pretty much easy as long as the smartphone is connected. You need the HTC Vive VR app on your smartphone. And once you download it, you can pair with your glasses and from there on, it's just a breeze. The only thing you need to do is once you've had uh, the, the app connect to the headset, you need to make sure that both the smartphone and the headset are paired together. And so you hold the smartphone uh, with two fingers and that sort of automatically pairs and then you can control the UI like you see on the screen. The UI is pretty elaborate and you can pretty much do everything you want straight from the UI. Now, the things that I could record, I'll overlay them on the screen for you guys to get a reference of what things look like in VR, but the gaming experiences, some of them I couldn't get to record on the headset natively, 
So for that, I'm just going to overlay video footage from whatever source I can get so you guys get a better understanding of what sort of games I played throughout my usage. Now, as far as what you can do with the headset, I think the number one thing you need to do is go over to this application called Viveport, which has pretty much a really, really large collection of games, experiences, etc., etc., that you need to take advantage of. Now, there's something called an Infinity subscription, and I definitely recommend you take that if you want to use this headset for an extended period of time. Now, there is a way to connect Steam VR onto this headset, but it's not officially supported, so I didn't try it. But as far as the gaming selection goes, you can see all the games that I am showcasing at the moment on screen, and you've got different sort of genres for whatever games you'd like. I've got a collection of different games that I've installed, and for me, my favorite games are always the racing ones as well as the sports ones, and those are the ones that I usually play. Now, one of the ones that I did try was a roller coaster a sort of simulator, and that worked pretty cool. I mean, the fact that you had everything right how it looks in real life was pretty insane. And if you sort of have an experience where you're slightly wobbling around, sort of simulating the uh, roller coaster experience, it does make for a realistic one. And I thought that was pretty cool. Just in an experience, if someone just wants to try out what VR looks like, I think that experience could be really cool. There's also another game about uh, baseball. So that was a game that really interested me because baseball is sort of similar to cricket and that's something that I play. And so baseball is basically trying to hit the ball and trying to win the game. It's pretty simple, it's not that elaborate, but it is a game that I have enjoyed. There's another game about racing. So you've got this motorcycle where you go past uh, certain trucks and certain cars and the amount of near misses you have, the more bonus points you get. And I think that was also pretty cool. So overall, in terms of just game selection, it's pretty robust. It's not going to be up there with the likes of other HTC VR headsets because those are obviously more powerful. They require more resources to run all of these games. So you won't be getting that. But as far as the overall selection of games goes, it is there to, you know, pass the time to have fun whenever you want. And maybe half an hour to one hour sessions is pretty cool. There's also exploration titles where you can do things like learn more about a certain artist. Uh, that was one of the experiences that I did try and just a lot of different games for you to explore so long as you have that infinity subscription and that is 21.99 dirhams per month which i think for the amount of games that you get is pretty much a bargain i mean otherwise you have to buy each game for around 19 to 20 dirhams so this is literally what you should do if you are looking to buy the vive flow headset that aside you can also use the headset for things like multimedia consumption and that's where sort of one other aspect of the headset comes into play. So if you want to watch YouTube videos, you can cast your smartphone and basically your smartphone's display into the VR headset and you guys will be able to see YouTube videos like you'd be able to see uh, sort of a movie in the cinema. I think that was pretty cool. You can lay back on your bed or your chair and just have a really widescreen view of whatever you're watching. And I thought that was pretty cool. Unfortunately, there was no way to record this, but imagine the home sort of setup that you have with the HTC Vive Flow and just replacing what you see on screen with a big TV, almost like, like a 60, 70, 80 inch TV almost. And that is pretty cool. Once you get used to that, you cannot move back down to a smartphone, even a laptop. So overall, I think the use cases are far and many. And my experience with the Vive has been pretty cool. I think there are things that the Vive constantly needs to improve. One is the selection of games, more compatibility, more high-end games. So all of that is coming in the future. But I think that aside, the core experience is pretty fun, pretty unique. And definitely if you're looking for a Vive uh, sort of product and want to get into the ecosystem, this is the perfect beginning to do so. So yeah, I haven't experienced any other VR headsets in the past. Uh, the one that I tried was the Google Cardboard. So this is a huge step up from that. But let me know what you guys think about the overall experience down in the comments below. I know there are other competitors like uh, the Oculus headphones, which I haven't used either. But if you guys have any ideas of whether or not uh, sort of those headphones would be even more powerful than these, let me know down in the comments. But I think for the sheer ease of usability, the fact that you can literally use your smartphone and pair this up pretty much anywhere, you just need a power bank, you just need your smartphone and you need a connection 
to the internet. And I think that is really, really good flexibility to have. I think one shortcoming with the headset is of course uh, being connected to the power bank. That sort of drags you down if you're standing up or you need to have some sort of pocket where you can store the power bank. But I think that aside, it's been a really, really fun experience and I'm gonna miss it when this goes away. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.